everybody. I am glad to have you back. Of course, you know I'm Apostle Deborah Childs, and we are here to do what? Face the book tonight. <laughs> so go ahead and push that share button and invite somebody to help us face the book tonight. Okay, we're going to have a powerful night because I've got, amen, a powerful woman of God with me tonight. Amen. And this is none other than Prophetess Vanessa Lyons. You want to tell everybody, hey girl. Hey, <laughs> we are so glad that you're with us tonight because we're going to talk about, you know, Legacy is joining in with the Life Center here in Abbeville, South Carolina. We're going to be joining in with them, okay, because Prophetess Vanessa has been in a prophetic training here for two months and we are going to go out with a blast what a service that's going to be called PPP. What is that, Apostle? PPP, praise, <laughs> prayer, prophetic, all right? And so we want to invite you, and that's why she's here tonight, because this is just a place where our heart throbs because that's what God called us to be a prophetic people, all right? And apostolic people are prophetic people. So we're going to break that down a little bit for you tonight and give you a great understanding. So that's why we want you to go ahead and share so others can know and others can come. Uh, I'll go ahead and let uh, TJ put that flyer up for you because, so we can tell you now before we get started, and then we're going to tell you again throughout, but it's going to be April the 21st. That is this Friday, right? Yes, ma'am. This Friday, 7 o'clock, amen, and so Life Center is going to be the place to be because I'm talking about when you're talking about praise, prayer, and prophetic I mean, that is the ultimate place in God. Did you hear what I said to you? So we want you to come on and join us. But what we're going to do, I think he put the flag up so you guys can see it. And what we're going to do, we're going to go right on into facing the book tonight. And then Prophet Vanessa is going to, we're going to be breaking down some things to you. Because you're going to rule, you're going to want to run. And you're going to, going to mark your calendar. You're going to change your calendar. Amen. So you can get out here on Friday night. All right. So we're going to go as we face the book tonight. We're going to go to first, Second Timothy. Second Timothy. And we're going to chapter 1. Second Timothy. Chapter 1. And we're going to verse 6, all right? 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 6. For this reason, I remind you to fan the, into flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of hands. All right, so this is Paul talking. So he's talking about something about fanning a flame that's within you. So, we need to kind of get Prophetess Vanessa to explain this scripture to us because this is her theme scripture that she's been using for the prophetic training. And I got to tell them also because Wednesday, that's tomorrow, you will be doing the, the training here mm -hmm. uh, at 6.30, right? Mm -hmm. 6.30. We'll be doing a last class, but you might just want to tip on into that, okay, because that will give you some... Uh, <clears throat> something of a thrust also, okay? But, so 6.30 Wednesday, that's tomorrow, we'll be here, and she'll be training us um, then, and then on that Friday, the 21st, is when we're gonna go out with a blast, okay? But we'll be coming back again, okay? <laughs> but go ahead and explain that scripture for me, and how does that relate to prophecy? Maybe you can kind of tell us what Paul is talking about. How, how, because he's talking about flaming up, flame that's within us. <laughs> what does that mean? Well, Paul was encouraging young Timothy, and he was saying to him, the giftings, the spiritual giftings mm -hmm. that are in you, mm -hmm. fan those flames, stir up those giftings, don't wow. let them lay dormant, okay. use what you got All right. <laughs> that All God right. has given you. Right. So when, right. when you look at this, when you look at the word stir in that text, you look at the word stir, mm -hmm. it says from the Vines Dictionary, mm -hmm. to kindle afresh. Mm -hmm. It means to keep it in full flame. Woo, so he's yeah, telling you to flame. keep this spiritual gift in full flame. Mm -hmm. And to stir from the Webster Dictionary, it says to move, to shake. And I like this word, apostle, to agitate. Agitate. To rise <laughs> from one's sleep, to put oneself into motion, into activity, or to evoke. So he's basically telling him, 
that gift that's inside of you, mm -hmm. I want you to stir it up. I want wow. you to invoke it. I need it to be moving and in motion. I need to be active because so, God has given us gifts. When we mm -hmm. go to um, 2 Corinthians, let's look at 2 Corinthians okay. chapter 12 because these gift things are here in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's see. I think I want to start at verse 7. Mm -hmm. Let's see. A spiritual gift is given to each of us ah. so that we can help each other. To one person, the spirit gives the ability of wise advice. To another, the same ability, he gives the gifts of special knowledge. Mm. The same spirit gives great faith to one another. And the same spirit gives great faith to one another and to someone else one, the spirit, he gives the gift of healing. So mm -hmm. here is this one. Mm -hmm. He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another one the ability to prophesy. Prophesy. So put that in the comments. <laughs> prophesy. <laughs> so we have spiritual giftings inside of us. And they're listed there in 1 Corinthians mm -hmm. um, chapter 12. Okay. And so whatever your gift is that's in you is not meant to lay dormant. Yeah. It's meant to be stirred up. It's meant to be evoked. Because the gifts aren't for us. They're right. for the body of Christ. Right. That's good. They're that's for the good. body that's of Christ. Good. So this whole piece then, we're, we're, we are just um, focusing on the prophetic. Mm -hmm. All right, we're we're, we're focusing on prophesying. That's what this training has mm -hmm. all been all about. And I think that's strong language mm -hmm. that um, uh, Paul is using there to stir it up, to mm -hmm. uh, uh, invoke it. Because get, let's go back because you were prophetic. Because mm -hmm. some of y'all don't realize that you can be prophetic yeah. and don't even. What, what would be a definition of prophetic, would you say? Let's see. If, if people, because we're talking about people that are prophetic and we're talking about having prophetic training and mm -hmm. we're going to be doing PPP, praise, prayer, and prophesying. So, okay. I'm going to read this definition. may not know what is prophecy. I'm going to read this definition of prophecy. It signifies the speaking forth of the mind of God oh, and the yeah. counsel of God. Mm -hmm. It is the declaration that which cannot be known by natural means. Oh, that's good. It is a forth telling of the will of God. Whether with reference to the past, the present, or the future. Oh. So that's what prophecy is. It is the foretelling of the mind and the counsel of God. So God is telling us that we can have his mind. We can have his mind. That we can speak for his will. We're dealing with personal prophecy because mm -hmm. we know prophecy, there's messianic prophecy mm -hmm. where we look and we can see the prophecies where, because it's all through scripture. Jesus himself was a prophecy. Isaiah prophesied him um, 700 years before he was born. Mm -hmm. So we know that there are things, that the, whole, the whole scripture, when you go back and you just look at it, God chose to speak through mm -hmm. men yes. to tell what was going to happen. Okay, those are called prophets, all right? There are different types of prophets, but we're not going to go into all of that tonight. But it's just that you just really need to know that prophecy is still alive, okay? God still speaks to his people, and he still foretells about our life, okay? He can still go in and tell us. And some of you guys, have, like I was going to say before, may be prophetic and don't even know you're prophetic <laughs> because... One of the things about legacy, and that's why we wanted to join in with this. So all of my legacy network people out there, I need to see you here, all right? <laughs> we wanted to join in because we understand that that actually prophecy is legacy because it is just the passing down of the voice of God that he gives to his people. He passes down this gift. That's what she just read. The gifts, because because legacy is passing something down. And so the big question is, what will you leave? And so when I um, was coming up, the Lord had to take me into a place because I was prophetic and he was causing us to raise up an apostolic prophetic house here in Abbeville. Okay? So I had to, God had to send me amongst prophetic people. Okay? And so that is what happened with with Prophetess Vanessa, 
uh, she was 16 years old when she came to the daycare that I had at that time, and uh, she got saved, kind of left out of our lives, but God sent her right back. Why did he do it? Because she had prophecy in her. She had a call to be a prophet upon her. So God had to get her in her right tribe so that that gifting could be stirred up. Yes, stirred up. That was lying dormant. <laughs> that she was wondering about what's wrong with me yes, because yes. I'm seeing things. I'm hearing things. And that's what prophets do. And sometimes when you're not in that circle you don't understand what's going on with you. But this is what happens. And so that's what happened with her that God began to and once she got on a prophetic ministry, God began to fan your flames. Yes, yes girl. <laughs> and that prophetic woman began to come on up. And she, I mean, boy, she can prophesy. She can outbeat me prophesying, guys. Are you me? <laughs> Listen, that is so key what Apostle said because we are born with our gifts, right? But you have to be set in a body. You have mm -hmm. to find a tribe of people mm -hmm. that can help you learn what you have. Because I was having all these things, these dreams and seeing things, mm -hmm. and they were coming to pass, and I know things about people and it comes mm -hmm. to pass, mm -hmm. but I didn't know what I had. You know, I was young, I didn't know what I had. So he took me, set me in the body, mm -hmm. placed me in the body of Christ where we, where they flowed in those giftings. Exactly. And yeah. my gift began to be developed, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, developed. Develop. And that's mm -hmm. what fanning the flame is. Mm -hmm. It's developed because once you get a month, you'll see, uh, what was his name that got amongst the prophets? Saul. Saul. Mm -hmm. Saul. <laughs> he, he got amongst the prophets. He prophesied, mm -hmm. guys. Okay? So it's all about the tribe that you're among and the, the anointing that's in that house. That's why it's so important yeah. to be in the right church that can develop your giftings, okay? Because every church can't do it, okay? And so, um, but so, so that is prophecy in a nutshell there, that you're understanding that God still speaks mm -hmm. into our lives. He still shows us things that are going to come through his prophets, all right? So now we were talking about how we're going to go with praise. We're going to talk about prayer. We're connecting praise and we're connecting prayer with prophecy. Okay, that's why it's called PPP, guys. All right, put in the comment PPP because I need you guys at this PPP service. Okay, all right. So, so because what we're doing is we want to pass it down to others. Give them that under, because that's what legacy is called to do, to pass down the legacy of Jesus Christ. And prophecy is his legacy, okay? Prophecy was passed, I mean, that's how he came into the earth. He was prophesied into this earth. Do you guys hear me? That's how things happen. They happen because God is speaking forth in our lives and showing us his will, and he does it through people, all right? He does it through those that he's gifted in prophecy. He does it through those that he's placed even in an office of a prophet. And that's something different, too, that you come to the training you learn about. Okay? <laughs> so let's just see how we can just work this as far as the first one, praise what we understand as prophetic worship. Oh, I love it. Prophetic worship. And so... What happens, there's a relationship between prophecy and music, whether you guys know it or not. I am so moved by music. Music will pull up a prophecy in me in a heartbeat. You hear me? So, so, um, yeah, so God wants to give us, uh, I think she's going to give us, uh, like, the benefits and benefits of uh, prophetic worship and how it helps you to stir up that prophecy in you. I want you to know that David, and this is as you face the book, look in 1 Chronicles chapter 25, verse 1, David formally instituted prophecy to musical accompaniment along with praise and worship if you studied in the tabernacle of David, okay? So we read in Chronicles here, David together with the commanders of the army set apart some of the sons, Asaph, Heman, and um, Jedathom, okay, for the ministry of prophesying accompanied by harps, lyres, and cymbals. So David brought the music into the house of God to bring forth the prophetic, powerful move on his behalf. Okay? So go ahead, woman of God, and just tell us you're gonna, she's gonna kind of pull you in and give you a little bit why it's so important to pull that music in with the prophetic. So these are some benefits of having a prophetic um, worship, mm -hmm. prophetic praise. Okay, that's in how your we're going to start off. We're going to start off with that praise. Yeah. 
So it fa it facilitates God's encounter. Mm -hmm. It welcomes God in. Yeah. Because yeah. God wants to commune with us. Mm -hmm. So he wants to um, meet with us. Mm -hmm. So when you have a prophetic worship, a prophetic praise in in your life or in your um, ministry, it actually facilitates an encounter with yeah. God. It sets the course for an, you to have an encounter with mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Um, because he comes in through yeah. praise. You, you can't have anything without, you know, the, one of the greatest things that I learned, because a lot of times people want to come to a service and they want to miss the praise service, but they want to say, I'll just get there when they preach. But no, 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 baby. See, the preaching is for you. Yes. The praise is for him. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say that again. The preaching is for you. <laughs> the praise, the worship, is that's the only thing that we're ministering back to God. Because God doesn't need to hear the preaching. <laughs> you hear what I just said? <laughs> it's for you. So that's why you're giving in the service and you're giving back. And that's the powerful thing mm -hmm. about praise and worship. Because we're offering it up to him. And we're honoring him. And it pulls his presence. Mm -hmm. Like what she's saying. That's what God lives in. He inhabits Woo! The praises of his people. Okay? <laughs> so if he comes in, you know he's going to speak, girl. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> it breaks open the atmosphere. Yeah. It breaks Come open on. the atmosphere mm -hmm. for God to move. It says praise is prophetic when it's directed and empowered by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. to accomplish God's now purpose for our lives in That's a particular good. meeting That's service. Mm -hmm. So it breaks open the atmosphere for God to move. It sets the precedent for everything else to follow. Mm -hmm. And it also enables us to receive an impartation from the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can receive an impartation from God when we are in prophetic worship, when we are in prophetic praise. Mm -hmm. When we are yielded to Jesus in an attitude of love and worship, we are more receptive and open for him than any other time. Uh -uh. Than any other time. Mm -hmm. And prophetic worship does that. That's why it's important mm -hmm. to have prophetic minstrels, yeah. prophetic yeah. praise yeah. team, yeah. 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 prophetic people to yeah. flow yeah. in the prophetic. Yeah. Yeah. It's very important. Yeah. Um, it prepares our hearts for God's word. Mm -hmm. It uh, it, it kind of plows up that hard, stony place that mm -hmm. worship does so mm -hmm. that when God's word comes forth, it can penetrate the heart, okay. of, the heart of the person. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. It can. We can receive a prophetic message from God through prophetic worship. Have you ever been in a service where there just been just the power of God flows on mm -hmm. the minstrel and then you begin to hear. Oh yeah. You begin yeah, to I hear. <laughs> you can hear clearly. You can begin to hear what God want, wants to speak yeah. in that time. Mm -hmm. It opens you up. Because the music, God downloads what we have to understand because the prophetic is so powerful because with the heavens being open mm -hmm. and the worship going up to God, God can send down to us. Okay. It's so powerful because even in the prophetic um, worship, that's where we see God even fight yes. for us. Yeah. Psalms uh, 149 tells us that we execute vengeance with high praise, okay? <laughs> Let the high praise of God be in your mouth like a two-edged sword. <laughs> and so God even fights for us in this praise. That's mm -hmm. powerful that people would think that I don't need to be in the praise yeah. because God is fighting for you in praise. And I love in Zephaniah 317, I think it's, yeah, Zephaniah's face in the book, guys. Check that out, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Zephaniah 317. It talks about how the Lord will sing over us. But in that Passion Translation, that's the scripture I gave you for your birthday. Mm -hmm. Hey, yes. this girl just had a birthday, y'all. Okay? <laughs> and um, the Lord just gave me that scripture to give yeah. her. It talks about how God sings over us in Zephaniah 3, chapter, uh, chapter 3, verse 17. He sings over us. And it talks about how God, in the Passion Translation, it says he twirls and he spins around <laughs> over us. He sings over us. Is that not powerful, y'all? That powerful. God, amen, will sing over us. And as he sings over us, I've been in prophetic services, woman of God, where they're singing, God sings, we sing unto him, and then one of the prophets, a song will be dropped down, and then they will sing back to God. God will sing to us, we will sing to him. I love it. Mm -hmm. That is powerful in itself. So, I mean, when you get in this kind of atmosphere, mm -hmm. I mean, it just, it takes you to a different dimension. It really does. It does, because mm -hmm. breakthrough happens. Yeah. When you get yeah. up under a prophetic worship or you yeah. get up under a prophetic praise, yeah. breakthrough happens. It, it literally opens up mm -hmm. everything to, mm -hmm. to come forth, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And also, it's how to receive these benefits from prophetic worship in your personal life. 
when praise comes forth, God, like we said before, when worship or prophetic praise comes forth, God begins to download things inside of you, and he begins to show you things, and you begin to hear God more clearly. Even in your own personal time, it doesn't have to be in a corporate worship, but in your own personal time, when you begin to sing songs unto the Lord, yeah. God will download songs yeah. into your heart, and he'll begin mm -hmm. to, you begin to worship and praise mm -hmm. him, and God will begin to unlock, mm -hmm. he begins to counsel mm -hmm. you. That's really a lot of the songs mm -hmm. now, people that have tapped into the Psalms, because David himself mm -hmm. was a psalmist. Mm -hmm. Okay, so all of David, David's Psalms were prophetic. Yeah. Okay, I talked to y'all last week about Psalms 34 and 20. Mm -hmm. That's when David prophesied that not one of Jesus' bones would be broken. Okay, as he's writing, because he's in the presence of God, um, and he's, he's, he's hiding in with God, and God just downloads. So that's so important. I have even been in services where whole uh, teams um, have written uh, CDs of songs of the Lord, uh, or prophetic songs that they just come down as they were playing, and spontaneous worship just mm -hmm. happens. So yeah. we don't take that for granted, uh, because that's when some of the most powerful songs can come. A lot of times, because we're going to go to the next one, which is prayer, when we talk about going into prayer, a lot of times when I'm going into prayer, I begin to sing prophetically also in prayer. Because mm -hmm. you're singing, you can sing love songs unto the Lord, mm -hmm. you know. But that, but that praise piece is so powerful. You cannot do without it because that is what ushers the presence of God in. But we have to understand that these three are connecting. So we have the praise, we have the prayer, and if you're going to be a prophet, you got to be a praying prophet. I mean, if you're going to be an apostle, you got to be a praying apostle. If you're an evangelist, you better be a praying one, okay? Uh, uh, whatever you are, amen, just a believer, there's no way that we can leave our prayer. This is the thing that the disciples asked Jesus to teach them, teach us how to pray. And so this prayer piece is just, it's every person, you may not be a prophet, you may not be an apostle or whatever, but every person is called to pray. Every one of us need to know how to pray. You will not get around the ministry of prayer um, to have a relationship with the Lord because the big, the greatest definition of prayer is intimacy. Mm -hmm. You have to be, it's a place of intimacy where you come, it's an intimate relation. Prayer is relational. It's not just us giving our do, to do this mm -hmm. to him. It's that I come you know, one of the things I, I told them when I just did this prayer school, and we gonna, they're just going to have to break the prayer <laughs> school to y'all, okay? But it was just that piece of understanding that I want to be with God. Yes. Yes. I want to be with him. So that, that, that's, what, that's why prayer is not hard for me, mm -hmm. because I want to be with him. Who do you love like that, women? Who do you love like that, men? It's not hard for me to be with my daughter. I love her. I want to be around her company. Prayer is not a hard thing because it's relational, okay? And when you really get in the, the, the peace on prayer with the prophetic, this is how we really hear the voice of God. You cannot really learn the voice of God without prayer. Exactly. Talk about it. You can't learn the voice of God mm. without prayer because that's your communication piece. You know, it's just like, if I'm not communicating with apostles, if I'm not talking or I'm not listening, because communication is two ways. Mm -hmm. You talk and you listen. Mm -hmm. It's the same way with God. Mm -hmm. A lot of times we just want to give God, like she say, our to-do list, our wish list. But we don't really want to hear what God got to say to us. You know, we want to tell him everything we want him to do for us. Mm -hmm. But that prayer brings us into an intimate relationship with God where he can speak to us. He can direct us. Yeah. He can guide us. Yeah. And I want to say this. Prophecy, we, we love prophecy, but it does not take the place of the word of God. Right. And it does not take the place of prayer. Because actually, I have found... I have prophesied, and we, we can take the word of God mm -hmm. and should be, mm -hmm. everything that we prophesy should be scriptural. Scriptural based. Right. Yeah. And, we, and we can take the prophecy. I've had just the Lord begin to prophesy scriptures to people, mm -hmm. okay? And that's, that's what's necessary. Mm -hmm. You know, we got to face this book as prophets. You have to pray and know the word of God because your prophecy, really your prophecy level, mm -hmm. It doesn't go above your knowledge of, of the facing word. the book. Of the word. Okay, you gotta right. face the book to be a prophet. Okay, <laughs> you see that that's what David did. I mean, as we and, and the psalmist that are 
that are now some of the songs that are now going forth. I mean, they're just from the Psalms of David. You know, I think the guy just wrote us a while back did Psalms. What was really big, Psalms 18, I think it was Psalms right. 18, but it was really big, I, sh I should have looked it up before I passed, but it was really big, but you just get that, and so when you go into that place of prayer, it will bring that love, the love songs out to the Lord also, but prophetic, I, so we talked about the relational piece there, the prophetic prayer helps you pray with authority and faith, so as you face the book in 1 John, okay, it tells us, this is the confidence we have approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us and we know that he hears us. Whatever we ask, we know that we have that which we have asked. That's first John. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that's where we are, we're looking at. So it's, it's, it's understanding that when we pray, we have that confidence. We should have that confidence that God hears us. We should have that confidence that God will speak back to us. Because like you said, it's not just a one-way conversation. It's the whole piece of prophetic prayer is that we're able to hear him. Yes. Because out of it, he will speak things to us, okay, in prayer. And that's what turns the prayer into his will so we begin to agree with his purposes because the thing about praying in the holy spirit is when we don't know what to pray yes <laughs> he prays for us so we don't want to hear that stuff about you don't know what to pray yeah. because you need to go in and pray in the holy spirit and even if you don't understand it i've been praying in the holy spirit and of course Things come out as you're praying in the Holy Spirit. God begins to speak. God can shift and begin yes. to tell you to pray for a certain oh, ones. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes it would be crazy. I heard this uh, prophet say that he began to pray. He was praying in tongues and he began to say, cookie candy, cookie candy, cookie candy, cookie candy. And he was praying and he went to, um, it was Kenneth Hagin, and he went to him and he said, I was praying for you. And when I was praying for you, I heard these words, cookie candy, cookie candy, cookie candy. And those were the, the names, the nicknames of his grandkids. So the Holy Spirit knew the nickname of his grandkids and had him praying and he thought, what is this? But sometimes we don't know, but that's the confidence that we have that when we're praying in the Holy Spirit, he knows what to pray. And that's the powerhouse about it, honey. That's what puts us in agreement with God's promises because we begin to pray from that prophetic place, okay? And um, that's just a power piece because the, the Holy Spirit begins to direct our prayers. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like, I, I mean, that's the ultimate prayer. It is. That's the perfect prayer. The Holy Spirit knows what to pray when we don't. So that's one of the greatest reasons why the prophetic prayer, and you have to, you, you should, you can prophesy, but you should be, you should, mm -hmm. it should come out of that. That's what develops and gives us the strength uh, in our prayer or in our prophetic life is that prayer that we take on. I don't think people, because some people are so gifted and some people could, can just prophesy because they're gifted, but they don't have the relationship. Yes. And so that's, that's kind of a, a place uh, that I think most people may not recognize that the gift is there, but yet you still need that relationship because that's what's going to direct you going to direct your path and help you in your life and build your character, character. Yeah. because that's what God yes, is concerned yes. about. Yes. Because I always tell y'all the gift belongs to God. That ain't you. Exactly. That don't tell me nothing about you. That's right. Okay. But when when we begin to go into prayer and have this relationship with God, then He can trust us too. That's right. Talk about that trust piece. With yeah, God. God can trust you when you begin to meet with Him. When you make it meeting with Him, having that relationship with Him taking time to commune with him, he can trust you because you're in his face because you're mm -hmm. seeking his will and not yours. Mm -hmm. So he, you begin to trust you, trust God with your life, then he can begin to trust you with other people's lives. Yeah, He'll yeah, begin yeah. to speak to you even more so. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Yeah. He'll trust you with other people's mm -hmm. lives because a lot of times God can be showing you something mm -hmm. uh, and you it is just for you to take the prayer. Mm -hmm. It's not for you to just blab out. 
You know what I'm saying? And so you learn, you mature as a prophet. Because sometimes when we're baby prophets, we just think whatever God shows us, we just got to throw it out there. We just got to tell you. No, sometimes it's just like, okay, what I do with this God? And I just take it in prayer. God shows me. Because I know God has shown you some things about a lot of people. Yes, and yes. that's the key to having that character and that relationship with God. Because if he shows you some things about people, and everything that he shows you is not going to be good. Because all of us are not just the, the, the spirit of the prophecy. The gift of prophecy, of course, is that we edify, we uh, exalt, we comfort, all of those things. But she walks in the office of a prophet. And what most people don't know that... This is a part of prophecy that people do not like yeah. because prophecy, the Bible says, um, uh, as we face the book, it's in Timothy that he tells us about that um, the scriptures were given for first reproof. Mm -hmm. ah, <laughs> Y'all don't like that word, do you? That means correction. And so God, will, just like he did David, do you remember when um, David went with Bathsheba? Mm -hmm. And God sent a prophet to David to correct David. Mm -hmm. To tell David, now all this man had was one little sheep. And you know when he took the little man's sheep, he had to when he took, uh, what was his, Uriah's right. wife. So God sends his prophet to just, and David, David says, okay, what, this man should be killed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And here God is using the prophet to correct him. And so a lot of times when people prophecy, when you're true and walking that prophetic, you do have to bring correction to people. You do have to as an office of a prophet. That's a part of it also. So it's not all just good, good, because you're going to see in the, when, when the prophets really came into town like Samuel, mm -hmm. they were like, did you come for good or did you come for bad? Okay, now she's one of those kind of prophets, okay? <laughs> She can tell you good, she can tell you bad. Okay, but most of the time she's gonna weep and cry yes, because it doesn't, uh, you don't want, a true prophet never wants to just have to go and correct and tell somebody, woe unto you. Yeah. They wear the cry and weep about you, cry out and ask, that's a true Mercy, prophet. God. Mercy, yeah, that's a true, that's why God can trust you. Yeah. You're not gonna say, kill them, God. You're not gonna be the sons of thunder. You know, but you're gonna go to God and you're gonna really cry out for mercy. Yeah. And that's why you can be a true prophet of God because he knows that's what Moses was. Moses, yeah. I mean, he just went and interceded for the people, you know, and he's just so like, Lord, if they, if they don't go, I'm not going. If you don't go, I'm not going, you know, and just cried out for the people. And so that's the heart thrust of the prophetic. But it's so wonderful because the prophetic will take your life and just you just, ooh, it just guides you, honey. Not the stars, not the stars. Not your horoscope, not your horoscope. No, 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 no. Come on. It is the... <laughs> not the soothsayer, not the witch, not the root worker, y'all. Okay? But prophetic, the voice of God, him speaking and you actually coming into your purpose as men and women begin to speak into your lives. Now, you know what I used to do here, then we're going to, I think we're going to cut off, but... I used to, uh, and still do, I keep my prophecies because it's so important. Yes. Timothy tells us, I mean, this Timothy guy, Paul is really teaching him yes. how to, he tells him that you take these words and you war over your prophecies. So that's a prayer piece. The words that were spoken to us, you've got to learn to take your prophetic words. Don't just cast them away because that's the voice of God speaking to you. So we write down our prophecies. We record our prophecies prophecies so we can go back and we can say God you said this about my life mm -hmm. and begin to pray from that point of what God said about you um your life from a young girl things were spoken into her life that she's seen walk into now Joshua my son things were you know this th even the the prayer piece that's how we became kingdom life because God gave me this scripture prophesying from the scripture we talked to God told us we we're going to have a name change for our church and I am then just in prayer how you take you're facing the book and boom something lights up to you thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven so thy kingdom come kingdom life that's what it come out of because this is what the ultimate thing that God wants us to live out of the kingdom 
So we have to have a kingdom life. So that's what Jesus prayed, that will be done. And so when you read the word, it's going to jump out at you. That's why it's so important that you face the book. Because God is going to have things that are going to jump out at you. You're going to begin to pray it. I love praying the Psalms mm -hmm. because David, amen, he knew how to pray. He knew how to kill you when you needed to be killed. <laughs> Come on, those are called predatory prayers. <laughs> but we don't kill the people no more. We kill the spirit. <laughs> Okay, and then he knew how to love on the Lord, you know, and he knew how to repent even through the Psalms, like, um, you know, people of uh, the Psalm, Lord is my shepherd, I should not want, you know, we sing that, um, that David, and one of the, um, one of the great ones that he's in Isaiah 51, when he had, um, when he had sinned uh, with Bathsheba, he said, create in me a clean heart, and renew a right mm -hmm. spirit, Whipping me, you know, take it, honey. When you're not sin, sing it to the Lord. <laughs> I put a young man in the altar. I say, honey, go in here and read Psalms 51. Just take it before the Lord and repent, okay? So those are great prayers also in there. But I am so glad that you joined us tonight. You got anything else you yeah. want to share before we go? Yeah, I want to go back and grab something that you yeah. said about um, taking your word, your yeah. prophecies yeah. Yeah. that yeah. You, you've written down and you've heard. Because when life happens, because it's going to happen, <laughs> that's the perfect place to really grab hope to your words oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's to real, um, encourage real, yourself. That's because real. when life starts to happen, that's it almost real. looks like, God, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. So that's a perfect place, along mm -hmm. with God's promises in the word of God. Those prophecies that he's given you, that has been spoken over you, mm -hmm. like she was saying, war over them. Mm -hmm. Begin mm -hmm. to remind God of these words that he spoke over your life. Mm -hmm. It is so important. And mm -hmm. I want to speak to someone who, like, the making of a prophet. Pastor. Okay, yeah. The making yeah. of a prophet. Yeah. <laughs> Listen. Ooh. Yeah. Got to be made. Yes. <laughs> and, and he's going to make you. If you have the call, the office of a prophet on your life, it is not glamorous. You mm -hmm. see all everybody on Facebook, social yeah. media, want to be a prophet. You know, want to thus say the Lord all over the place. Listen, if they ain't got no character, if they haven't allowed God to make mm -hmm. them, I doubt if they're really walking in who, you know, who God has called them to be. Mm -hmm. Because God is going to make you first and foremost. He's going to crush you. Everything yeah, that's in you that's not like mm -hmm. him, he's coming for it mm -hmm. because he has to trust you. It's a heavy weight. It's a heavy responsibility to you know to to for him to be able to speak to you in regards to his people because mm -hmm. it's not about you, but he wants to make sure that everything inside of you represents him. Yeah. So if you do have that gift on your life, that office on your life, you wonder what is going on with my life. I'm telling you, he, you're right where he wants you at. He's crushing, mm -hmm. he's making you, mm -hmm. he's developing you, he's maturing you. Everything about you that's not like him, he, he's coming for it. He wants it out. He's coming for it. I like that word right there. Y'all put that in the comments. He's coming for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? This whole season, Jesus has been our example yes. of death, mm -hmm. that we have to die to the flesh. Yes. That's the way that he went to the cross. Mm -hmm. And it, the crazy yeah. thing about it, it was prophesied. Mm -hmm. Jesus prophesied his own <laughs> death, y'all. Woo, he said, you're not crazy. Man, I'm telling you. Then he told him, I'm going to rise again. He prophesied he was going to rise up. So y'all go to prophesy. I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. But then I'm going to have me a resurrection. I'm going to have me a resurrection, okay? Amen. And that's what he, with death burial, that's yeah. what that place where yeah. you said he, he buries mm -hmm. us. You know, and it looks like nothing is there. But that was so important that you see it because I have been in such um, times of adversity mm -hmm. that I have had to go back and read back to the Lord what he said to me as I wrote down my prophecies. Father, this is what you promised me. Yes. You know, so it holds you in place. It keeps you together because you're going to go through those times. Because remember, mm -hmm. we talked about there's a prophetic language. And I, I hope yeah. in your next class that you're going to do it. Because mm -hmm. God talks yeah. crazy talk. Yeah. You know, God will tell us victory. He talk, victory. I'm fixing to have victory and we shouting, but then a fight comes. A battle is coming. Yeah, because <laughs> you don't have victory without a battle. 
Yes. And so that's why some of us don't understand some things have been prophesied to us and then the opposite seems to happen. It's because God is making you yes. in it. You're not going to be the same person because God will speak to your potential. Mm -hmm. He speaks to that. And, and some of you can say, well, this was prophesied over my life, but you've got to be aligned. You need to be walking in some authority. Mm -hmm. You need to be under somebody. Who's your mama? Who's your daddy in the spirit realm? Who's your pastor? Who is, is um, who is, are you under so that you can have authority? Mm -hmm. Because so many prophets, amen, they're prophesying, but they're not under any authority. And that's one of the things that prayer gives you authority. When you pray, God recognizes who you are because you come to him often. He knows you. And so that is a powerful piece in itself. So we want you guys, and TJ's going to put it back up there, the flyer. We want you to join us. Well, tomorrow night, we'll be doing the training at 7, no, 6.30, excuse me, 6.30 here at the Life Center, Abbeville, South Carolina. And you'll see that that's tomorrow night. We'll be doing training. Then on Friday, the PPP, okay, we're prophetess, amen, Vanessa Lyons, she's going to be hosting us, she's going to be teaching us and guiding us into this place of praise, we're going to have, that, uh, we're going to have a dynamic uh, praise team yes. that's coming from uh, Edgefield, mm -hmm. Edgefield, do you remember? They're coming from Edgefield, yeah. Remember. Yeah, but they are coming from Edgeville, uh, South Carolina, and so you don't want to miss this praise because this praise is going to break open some things for you. Amen. Uh, are any of you out there that may be in a struggle right there, this is the place to be because you just have to come sometimes to to a place where there's an open heaven and this place life center honey god lives here y'all hear what i just said that altar amen he, he you go to that altar baby he going he going to do something because fire is there right burning griffin fire <laughs> is there amen we the fire people in Abbeville, y'all we are the praise we are the prayer we are the prophetic people okay so you want to join us amen if you've got any of this come on and get your flame stir it up because sometimes especially when we went through the COVID and all of that stuff like that a lot of stuff got lying dormant in some of y'all that you don't know a lot of stuff got pushed down because and you didn't rise back up and get back into the house of God around the strength of that anointing that prophetic anointing will pull up we've seen people that came in here and prophesied and they never prophesied again yeah. <laughs> yeah. they got amongst the prophets so <laughs> I invite you to come and get among the prophets and Flame, fan the flames, amen. That'll be Friday, this Friday, the 21st, 7 o'clock here at the Life Center in Abbeville, South Carolina, okay? So we bless you and we thank you for facing the book with us, amen. And we will be looking for those PPP people, all right? Love you guys. See you soon.